everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're looking at the in-string function again. I had a, a special request out there that, hey, can you do this again in a different way? And I, you know, I certainly I'll do that. So we're going to look at this um, PowerPoint presentation here, and we'll go to the function. Now, before we do that, I'm going to give you the 20-second commercial. We do cr uh, customized CRISP report training. Use your data building your reports. Uh, it, the learning curve speeds up doing it that way. And also, um, We'll write reports for you if you'd like to. So you can contact Tom Zedell for more information. Tom's uh, information is on the next page here. There's Tom's email address and phone number. And there's mine. If you ever have any questions about um, a report or a problem with one um, or an idea, you can uh, send this to me at my email address. And um, also, down at the very bottom, that's the new uh, website for the Crystal Tips. So let me go ahead and uh, exit out of this, and let's get, get rolling here. So what I want to do here is um, I'm going to use the string function. I want to validate the email addresses. Now, there's a lot more. When somebody's trying to validate email address, they're having to look for at signs, periods. There may be two periods. Now, I've got a list of um, uh, email addresses here from the database that, that um, comes with Crystal Reports, the, the test database. If you notice up here, there's the name, there's the at sign, there's the period, and there's the .com. It could be a .net, .org, whatever it may be. Uh, so we're going to put in a few rules here to validate this. So the first thing is, is that for an email address to be valid, it has to have an at sign. So this is a uh, in string. It has to be a string field. We're going to look in this email address and to validate that it does have a uh, at sign in it. So I'm going to go over here to the formulas. I'm going to to uh, right click and select new and we're going to I'm going to put I N S T R oop how and then right next to that the at sign so we'll know we're checking for the at sign. Click OK. Now I need to find the uh, function called in string. Now it, you're working with strings, so if I go here to functions in this little window here and I hit on the plus sign, you're going to find um, in string through here. If you go down through this, there it is. Here's in string. And if you highlight um, each one of the little components here and hit the, the question mark, it's going to tell you what that function does. So we're going to look at um, down here at the bottom where it says uh, S1 is a text to be searched and uh, str2 is what you want to find in that. So I'm going to exit out of this. Now another way of doing that, if you did know where to look at in the functions, a little handy little thing to know is if you go down to the editor down here and you click inside that and you hold down the control button and hit the space bar, it's going to list all the functions in alphabetical order. So here I can start typing I, N, S, and then all of a sudden it goes down to the very last ones and if I double click on that, it's going to put that in string function in the for me. Then once you have it inside the editor, you can highlight it just by scrolling over this. And then now hit the question mark, and you'll get the same thing we had before. Now let me just show you one other thing with that. Before I do that, I'm going to put a little space in here, or a bunch of space in there. Now if you happen to have spaces in there, and you go and grab one of the first spaces, see notice that there's a space after the R, and I hit the question mark, you're going to get the default. It's going to say the formula editor dialog box. So if you got that, it just means that there's a spaces in what you grabbed. Just grab the word itself. So I'm going to go up here, and so... I'm put in string, I'm going to put the open paren, and I'm going to grab the field that we want to evaluate. So I'm going to go up here, we're going to evaluate the customer email. And then what are we looking for inside of that string? We're going to look for the at sign. So I'm going to put a question mark, or a question mark, how about a comma there? Now this next thing, what we're looking for is the at sign. So the at sign has to be in quotes. So I'm going to put an open quote, the at sign, and the close quote. And the question I just got was, can it be a double quote? Yes, it can. The only difference is if you start with a single quote here, you have to end with a single quote. If it's a double quote, you have to end with a double quote. So I'm going to go and put the close print there. So right now, I've done the end string. I'm looking at the email field, and I want to tell me at what position is the at sign. So I'm going to save it, or I'm going to check the syntax, make sure it's okay. And nothing, no worries there. So I'm going to save and close. Now I'm going to go to design tabs, just easier to see 
if we were to put the field, I'm going to grab this in string at sign. I'm going to stick it on detail line right next to our email address. So it's telling me here that um, if I were to count the letters here, that the at sign is at the 13th position. So it does have one. Now, um, I'm going to go and find where the period is. And like I said, sometimes you have like uh, nallen.mitchell at symphony.corp. So there may be a period before the at sign. And we would go and there's more logic to go into that. I just want to make this simple. We want to find the period that's after or the since there's only a period that's going to be after the at sign, we're going to try to find where the period is. So I'm going to go and do the formula again. I'm going to right click, select new, and I'm going to call this an INSTR. And this time I'll put a period behind it. I probably should put that in open close brackets, but it's okay. And the same thing here, I'm going to hold down the control button. I'm going to hit the space bar. And I'm going to type in INS, and there's an end string. And this time, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the uh, uh, email field and comma, and then I'm going to put the period in. I'm going to use double quotes this time and put the period inside there. Now, while I was telling you, if I start with double quotes, I'm going to end with double quotes. I'm going to end with a single quote there. So I'm going to create an error and show you what it, what it does. Check syntax is going to stay. The matching for the string is missing. So I just need to change this single quote to a double quote. And I'm going to check the syntax again. No errors found. Now, you don't have to check the syntax because if there's something wrong with this, let me go back. I'm going to make it uh, error. If there's something wrong with that and I didn't check the syntax and went ahead and hit save and close, it's going to tell me, oh, yeah, there's an error in the formula. Do you want to save it? No, I don't want to save it. It's going to tell you what the problem is. So I'm going to go back and make this double quote so it'll work. Save and close. And let's put this in the report itself. So let's play with it for a minute. Because I want to, um, like I say, there's going to be more rules um, in validating email address than what I'm going to use here. I'm just going to try to make it simple just for now, just show you how this works. So the thing is, is that, okay, an email address has to have an at sign in it. And then with the, what we're working here, that the plus sign has to be greater than the in string or the uh, where the at sign is. So let's, let's create another formula here. So we're going to call it validate. And we're going to tell it if um, email address or actually if the um, if it doesn't have an at sign, here, let me let me let me uh, comment on this just for a second. Go back out. So the first thing we'll do, we're going to look at the end string here and look at the at sign. Has to have an at sign be a valid email address. So if any of these zero means that there's not a at sign. So let's go back to our formula here. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to tell it okay if the um, end string formula equals zero which means that there's not one in there, then else. And the other thing is, if there's not a period in there, it's not valid. So we're going to do the same thing. So if um, the in string period equals zero, then that's going to be not valid. So if the, the in string, if the at sign, no at sign, it's going to be zero. If there's no peer, it's going to be zero. And if either one of those is zero, it's not valid. So we'll go down the next one. And now, like I say, there's going to be a lot of rules that we have to put this if and else to cover it all because there's usually going to be a period in front of the at sign in real, I mean, these are really email addresses, but in most email addresses, you'll have a period in front of it. We'll have to set a, a different one for that one, but we're just going to go with the logic we have now. So I'm going to go if, um, if the... In string with a period is less than the number, or if it comes before the at sign, it's not going to be valid. I 
All right, if um, that period is greater than the at sign, then it's valid. So all we're doing here, we're going to the end string, we're telling it to uh, look where this at sign is. Does it have an at sign? Give me the number. If the number is zero, it's not valid. If there's not a period like .com, .net, .org, whatever, it's not valid. If the period is before the at sign, it's not valid. Now, in a real email address or something could be before that, you just would have to add to the logic. It would take more than 10, 15 minutes that we're trying to keep us to. Let's check the syntax here. Error that's fine. No errors found. So now I'm going to go back to our design tab here, and I'm going to put this little field up there that looks at our logic, and we preview. So right now, it does have an at sign. The period comes after, so it's valid. And if I go through this, now since I got this off a test database, they're all going to be valid, I would think. And they should be. And on this one, if you notice, there was not any periods before it, because I wanted, wanted to be before it, so it would show up invalid. All right. So the, fun, the end string function, number one is, is that you're looking, this is a string field. The end string function says, I want to look inside that field, and I'm going to tell you at what point that whatever you're looking for is. So on this one, we want to find the at sign. It's telling me that um, the end string is looking at the email, looking at the at sign. And it's saying that, okay, uh, the at sign is at the 13th spot. I know we did an end string you know, a while back trying to separate the names and stuff, and we may do some others with this. But the end string function is just looking at a field that is a string field and telling you what, uh, whatever you want to validate or whatever you want to find inside that string, it's going to tell you where it's located. Let's go to the end string for the period. Same thing is I'm looking at end string for the email. Where's the period? It's going to tell me that it's number 17 inside here, that the S sign's at number 13. So that's our end string function. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have a topic you'd like for me to cover, please let me know. Send me an email address. If you have a report that um, you have a short question that I can answer very quickly, shoot me an email. I don't mind doing that at all. Um, the thing is, is that I check email at the end of the day. When I'm doing, if I'm doing training, I'll check the end of the day. If I'm writing a report, I may look at it, see if I can help you very quickly. If not, I can't. So let me go back to our PowerPoint presentation so you can see those numbers again. And I appreciate you guys being here. Um, if you get a chance, go to, to the website, look at the Crystal Tips. We've gone back and grabbed the ones from a while back and put those in there. And I uh, hope this has been very helpful. Have a great afternoon, and we'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.